And Jello, I see an error that says an error has occurred. Please try again later. Playback ID. Is that just me? Introducing the next generation Wi-Fi system, Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6. Featuring the latest and fastest Wi-Fi 6 tri-band mesh technology for blistering multi-gigabit speeds that are up to 70% faster than Wi-Fi 5. Providing faster simultaneous streaming and file transfers, larger coverage, and better connectivity to every corner of your business. With Tri-Band 12 Stream, the router and each satellite is capable of delivering 6 gigabits per second of data throughput, connecting up to four times the number of devices than previous generations, allowing home offices and small businesses to serve more customers with better speed and less congestion. Plus, Wi-Fi 6 is 100% backward compatible with Wi-Fi 5 and below, allowing you to connect even more devices today and tomorrow. Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 features a blazing fast 2.5 gigabits per second internet port and 4 gigabit Ethernet local area network ports to wire printers, workstations, point of sale, or any network device to offload the Wi-Fi interface when needed. In addition, network security is a priority with 4 SSIDs and VLAN management for true enterprise-grade security to achieve network isolation between administration, employees, guests, and IOTs. The ultimate business-grade Wi-Fi experience. Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the virtual event series. Welcome to this YouTube channel. Uh, really excited for uh, today's stream today. So if this is your first time here watching the show, uh, I'll be your host for today. So I'm Angelo. I'm a senior interactive media specialist here at Netgear. So what that means is I manage this YouTube channel. I manage the Night Harbor Gaming Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Night Harbor Gaming. And really, if you follow any of our social cans like Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, there's probably a chance that I had my hand on it in some sort of former way. <laughs> but uh, just to introduce the rest of my guests that I have here on the show, we have Brett and Doug. Brett, you're right next to me. You're up next. Hey, Angela. Hey, hey everybody. My name is Brett Vassell, and I'm a senior brand experience manager for Netgear Business. And I help with the community and help get you know content ready, like blogs and uh, community articles and social, etc. And so, you know, just help uh, helping show off these great products and talk about them. It's great. Awesome, Doug. How you doing? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm Doug. Um, I'm the the product line manager responsible for Netgear business Wi-Fi products here at Netgear. Awesome. So. Uh, we got a really special show for you guys today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 uh, and really what that means uh, for your business. But uh, I just want you guys to know that this is a live interactive show. This is the virtual event series. Uh, we do this every Tuesday from 12 p.m. Pacific time to 1 p.m. Pacific time. So you pretty much have an hour to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, and you're going straight to uh, our uh, brand experience manager and our senior product line manager. So really, this is kind of your best way to deliver feedback if this is a product that you're interested in, you got any questions about it, uh, especially before you want to take the plunge, you know, I want to make sure that this is the right product for you. This is your time to ask. So we got a pretty active chat here today, actually. I want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, we actually hit our record last week. We hit over 100 people uh, at our Night Harper Gaming event. So I want to see if we can see that same excitement here for you today. Uh, if we can hit over 50, uh, that's going to be the goal. I would love to see 50 people here in the chat um, going all at once. And uh, for all of you guys who are just joining as well, we just hit over 50K subscribers. Um, I'm just going to tell you guys right now, we have also a tech support live stream that we do every Friday at uh, 12 p.m. Pacific time to 2 p.m. Pacific time. So that that time slot that's going to be your time to ask any kind of networking tech support questions but here today we're going to be talking about orbi pro wi-fi 6 so um you know just to 
break away a little bit from kind of what the show is all about, uh, I did want to kind of give a little bit of insight into what Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 is. Uh, so Brett, Doug, can you guys give a little bit more of a background um, into what Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 is and maybe the difference between Orbi or, and also what this means for your business as a whole? Doug, it's your baby. Start talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your baby. <laughs> Newly launched. All right, so... Yeah, newly launched. Um, we just launched this product um, on the 3rd of September, I think. Um, so this is the second iteration of the Orbi Pro uh, product line. Um, it's slightly different from Orbi. You know, we have an Orbi product line uh, that's been around for, what, five, six years. Um, so Orbi Pro adds a little bit more uh, of performance, a little, certainly a little bit more features, particularly uh, features that benefit business applications. Uh, we're going to go into that uh, in a lot more detail. In terms of second iteration, that is Wi-Fi 6, the first Orbi Pro was based on 11AC, and now we have retroactively called it Wi-Fi 5, and now this latest generation is Wi-Fi 6, which in the more uh, uh, engineering world, we call it AOG.11AX. So, you know, we're very excited about the product. It's got great performance, great features, uh, I hope you will, you know, get to learn about it and appreciate some of those uh, features. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited uh, to take a deep dive with the product. Um, again, this is going to be about an hour long of a show, so we're really going to tell you everything uh, that you need to know about the product, the tech specs. Um, uh, we're really, uh, we're going to have uh, the product here in person. Uh, Doug, we don't got to show it yet, but uh, we're going to show that to you uh, later in the show. Again, this is newly launched, and we're really excited to uh, finally get the ball rolling on it and telling everyone about it. Um, but we also have this demo video, uh, again, this is the virtual event series. So what we wanted to do here is bring that trade show experience to you. So I know we're kind of reaching the end of the summer, um, which is usually kind of like a, like a crazy time for us at Netgear. Uh, usually what we do are, um, these IRL events. So really like trade shows, like these conventions that we all go out to travel to. Some of the biggest, um, are throughout the year in the summer and also in the winter. Um, where you guys essentially are able to come up to us, come visit us at the trade show booth. We'll give you a whole in-depth uh, tour of the product uh, in person. Like, uh, for example, like, you know, one of my favorite things are the gaming events. Uh, so you're re really able to come up to us and meet the team here. Uh, unfortunately, we have been sheltered in place for a few months now, so that just isn't the reality. But, hey, you're able to get this for free. You don't have to pay for your hotel or your convention center ticket and uh you can watch this from any device anywhere you can get youtube so again this is a live show it will be going on for about an hour we're almost at 50 concurrent viewers so i'm excited that you guys uh, so have close. us here so close we're so close uh and i wanted to just shout out really quick we got shady joker we got vanessa kitty we got our regulars uh in the house today um we always love the support from our returners and we do notice that so thank you guys uh for coming here but we got a lot of questions uh, so everyone here, throw your questions in the chat right now. Uh, we're going to get back to it after we show you our trade show booth virtually. Ow. Hello, and welcome to the Netgear booth. I'm Doug Chung. I'm the product line manager for Netgear Business Wireless Products. Thank you for coming to our virtual booth. We are demonstrating the second generation of Orbi Pro, the Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6. The product number is SXK80. It comes with a router, also known as the base unit, and multiple units of the satellite. You can add more. The product number for the satellite unit is SXS80. Every few years, the Wi-Fi industry ushers in a new technology. With every generation of technology, Wi-Fi devices become faster, more reliable, and more secure. The latest technological evolution is Wi-Fi 6. Without exception, Wi-Fi 6 gives us faster speeds, more reliability, and a higher level of security. But there's more. Wi-Fi 6 also gives us more device handling capacity, longer smartphone battery life, and operates on both the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz bands, accommodating many types of devices. Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 represents a major breakthrough 
in performance and security compared to the original Orbi Pro. First, let's talk about Wi-Fi. It is 12 streams versus 8 streams. Because of Wi-Fi 6, the total throughput is 6 gigabits per second versus 3 gigabits per second. So that is 100% more, a tremendous amount of throughput improvements. More importantly, I want to talk about a few improvements that are critical to small businesses, one of which is the concurrent number of device handling or capacity in a restaurant, a cafe, health clinic, or home business environment. The number of devices is well above that of a typical home. The ability to stay connected to all devices and deliver consistent throughput for all applications, such as conference calls, is a customer satisfaction issue if you are a public-facing small business. And it is a work productivity issue if you are a professional working from home. Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 gives you four times more capacity and better roaming quality compared to the original Orbi Pro. Even more critical than raw throughput is security. A business can suffer grave consequences if there is a security breach. We have designed in multiple security measures to keep your business safe. Number one. There are four SSIDs built in. More importantly, each SSID is its own VLAN, so that users on your guest Wi-Fi network cannot access any device or data on your other SSIDs. Second, even within the same SSID Wi-Fi, devices cannot see each other. They are individually connected to the internet. This is a huge improvement of security for you and your guests. Third, we have designed in an authentication mechanism, Secure Boot, which prevents rogue firmware to be loaded and run on your Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6. Only authenticated firmware from Netgear can be loaded. Fourth, we design in a dual image in the firmware. What does that mean? There are always two copies of the firmware in your Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6. There is never a problem with data corruption, for example, due to a sudden power outage in the middle of a firmware upgrade. Your Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 is never a dead break. Our customers tell us that security and reliability are of paramount importance. We hear you. And we have made that a reality in Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6. Did I mention performance? Yes, I did. But I have left out one very attractive feature. Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 has a 2.5 gigabits per second Ethernet port, which can be configured as an internet port if you have internet service that is higher than one gigabit per second. Or it can be configured into a LAN port, which you can connect to a multi-gig switch. This Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 is loaded with unprecedented amount of raw performance and tons of small and home business features. I would like to invite you to come to our website and take a closer look. For more information, click the link in the description below. Thank you for your time, and we're glad you stopped by. All right, everybody. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We shot that actually a couple weeks ago, or maybe a few weeks ago, um, at the office. We did take some precautions. You know, we all wore masks. Um, it's actually pretty strict uh, now that the office is kind of really open for these video shoots. So um, again, you know, we're out here to deliver uh, this kind of content to you guys uh, and be able to uh, have that real-time interaction because this is your best way to get direct. Well, one, get your questions answered, but also give your feedback over to the team. Um, we all know we'd love to hear it. And by the way, we just did over uh, 50, I think we actually hit over 60 uh, concurrent viewers on there. I would love to kind of keep that going. So hopefully everyone here who is uh, in the chat so far is enjoying the show. Um, I'm just actually going to go all the way from the top of the chat just so I could make sure that um, 
you know, you guys are going to get your questions answered, and we're going to kind of start from the uh, the top down. Um, I appreciate uh, the early uh, the early viewers here. Shady Joker already got his coffee ready and his pe uh, pen and paper ready. Um, just for notes, uh, you've been here at almost every single virtual event, so uh, either you got deep pockets or you're really interested in all of these uh, all of these products. Um, Stefan, he's been waiting for this product all year. Uh, so Doug, just uh, you're gonna have some fans by the end of the show. By the way. Um, Actually, you already have fans on the show. You've already been here enough times. <laughs> um, but all right. And Ahmad, I know you're waiting for that shirt. I'm just saying, come back on uh, Friday Tech Support Live. Uh, we're going to have a little bit more of a special show for your, you guys just because we hit the 50K subscriber count. Actually, that's for everyone here who's watching this right now. Come to Tech Support Live on Friday. Uh, we're we're going to have some shirts to give away. Um, just as kind of like a little bit of a celebration here. Uh, for you guys enjoying the show and subscribing and liking, uh, we always appreciate that. 8 Mile 4S, excited for his RXR 1000. Uh, yes, we will have more updates for you on that. The pre order is coming up in about, or, launch, or it's going to start shipping out in about um, a couple of days. And all right, actually, we're going to get down to a couple of our first questions here. Brett and Doug, if you guys are ready. Um, so ready. Actually, the first one I do see is from George Jacobs. Let me see, make sure I didn't miss one. one. Um, can we cover 600 foot radius and what is the EMF dangers and how to shield? Mm. Hmm. Well, so, so first of all, the, uh, I'm not on mute, right? You can all hear me. Um, yes. So first of all, the product is thoroughly tested against all the um, uh, safety standards right, in the U.S., in Europe, and all major parts of the world. Any country that is big enough to put a big-ass, um, you know, safety standard out there, we test against it before we import it into that country. So in the U.S., certainly we have the most, you know, the, uh, the, the most stringent uh, safety standards, um, you know, UL, FCC, and all that. So we test against that, and we make absolutely sure that our radio power output is well within that limit. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's a short answer. It's got a lot of physics behind it. We, you know, we do really well in controlling the uh, the radio output, and at the same time maximize the range of the radio. So there's a lot that goes into the radio design, right? Um, so I hope that answers your question. And I think just one great thing to note about the Orbi system is that it uses tri-band. So that one radio that's designed to talk to the satellites is always going to be dedicated to the satellites. And so it's not that it has to be any more powerful, it's just that it's exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I think that's mm -hmm. a great aspect of the Orbi system. Awesome. Right, um, absolutely. We got one from Dave, uh, Dave Garrett, which is also a return to the show. Again, I, I remember this stuff. Uh, if you have a number of mesh Wi-Fi points and a device has to pass data via several of them wirelessly before it gets to the wired connection, is there a performance hit per hop? Absolutely, absolutely. So anytime you go through a hop, you do, uh, first of all, lose the lag time, right? So in a mesh design, if it is designed well, the backhaul needs to be intelligent, okay? Meaning that it's not always a star topology, it's not always a ring topology, it has to actively monitor the radio strength and the location of each one of the satellites in relation to the router. So at the particular mo moment, whichever has the best path, it makes that connection. So in an OB Pro Wi-Fi mesh design, our backhaul is not a fixed, I repeat, not a fixed star topology nor a ring topology. It's an intelligent kind of a hybrid depending on the moment kind of a, 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 a topology. So, honest should, answer, yes, there's a little bit delay, but we absolutely minimize it. Mm -hmm. Should we mention the uh, optional wired backhaul? Yes, so, yes, absolutely. So, you can do a wire backhaul if you so choose, if you can afford to, you know, in terms of, you know, labor and time and everything, right? If you can do a blue cable Ethernet hookup at the back of the, 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 the Orbi Pro, there's a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet there. So it's multi gig, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet as a backhaul that strings all your satellite together. So that is significantly, well, I shouldn't say significant because Ethernet is also a so-called non-deterministic kind of a 
medium, right? But, you know, by and large, it is very, very fast, right? The lag time of Ethernet is almost deterministic, even though in the strictest technical term, it's non-deterministic, but it, it's good. So we have both options available to our users. Awesome, awesome, cool. I love and, that flexibility of the system. It's, it's so cool. Yeah, and um, right. I'm actually going to kind of speak a little bit i mean this is kind of like outside of it it's, it's related we actually in the last round of filming we did shoot um this is what we're going to call it the future of the home office video so look out for that one coming out soon but orbi pro wi-fi 6 it has a lot of really great capabilities if you guys are looking for more of um i mean i'm gonna be careful with my words here brett maybe can help me out but it's kind of like more of a prosumer kind of uh you want to be able to have full control over your your home office and be able to kind of separate your SSIDs, make things more secure because, hey, you know, if you're working from home and you're blasting out confidential uh, documents just kind of straight into the void, you know, that's still not the uh, the best idea either. We'll, we'll address that a little bit later on in the show, um, but I just want to give two more questions and then we're going to go ahead and show off the product if you guys are ready. Um, so, Othman007, what is the difference between AX six versus eight versus 12 streams. Okay, so these are two separate concepts. Uh, Wi-Fi five versus Wi-Fi six. That is the design of the modulation, design of the, you know, in terms of you have heard the term, you know, 256 QAM, 128 QAM, those are modulation technology, right? Um, so that's the difference. And, and then there are other algorithms that go into the fundamentals of Wi-Fi five versus Wi-Fi six. In terms of 12 stream, it is really up to the system designer, like myself, to say, okay, how many streams I want, okay? So, you know, you, so you gotta compare Apple to Apple. In Wi-Fi 5, you can have 12 streams. In Wi-Fi 6, you can have 12 streams. So with the same number of streams, Wi-Fi 6 certainly should outperform Wi-Fi 5, right? So you, 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 you do that comparison, and then, may com uh, you know complicates your uh, calculation what if there's 12 stream in wi-fi 5 does it outperform four stream wi-fi 6 you can do the math and um you know you, you can do the calculation and then make a rough adjustment a, a very good way of uh, looking at it is that manufacturers like us usually put a number in the product so in wi-fi 5 we call it ac some number in wi-fi 6 we call it ax some number that number is the total Wi-Fi throughput that it theoretically can you know, deliver. So for example, AC1200 is very popular. That means that AC Wi-Fi 5 device can do 1.2 gigabit per second throughput total of all the streams all add together. Doesn't matter if it's two stream or four stream, doesn't matter mm -hmm. because it depends on how they do it, right? And in AX, you know, we have AX1800. What that means is that that device can do 1.8 gigabit per second throughput. So I chose these two kind of deliberately because AC1200 and AX1800 use, uh, use exactly the same radio configuration, which is dual band and two by two. So you see, based on the same radio configuration, just because of the technology improvement, there's a performance difference, right? 1.2 versus 1.8. Now, when it comes to Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6, we have deliberately uh, chosen to put in 12 streams versus the original Orbi Pro, which had eight streams. So it's from eight to 12, from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6, and therefore we make a claim, as you saw in the video, that we have 100% performance gain. So mm -hmm. that 100% performance per, uh, gain is not just due to Wi-Fi 6, right? Wi-Fi 6, by design, by its mathematical model can only give you 40%. We compound that uh, uh, effect with uh, a, an improvement in the, in the increase of the number of radio streams. And therefore we get you know, 12, uh, uh, 12 stream, uh, 6,000, uh, uh, six gigabit per second throughput total. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, thank you for the comprehensive that's answer. Good. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I didn't know the full details of that. That's cool. Yeah. and. Everyone here in the chat, you, you got a great resource because I remember at our AirBridge event, man, Doug, you were so excited. Uh, we'd love to see that same excitement for you uh, here today. And actually, I, I think, see it. yeah, I'm we already see it. it. <laughs> we're going to see it a little bit uh, in, a, in a quick second. Actually, Doug, let's go ahead and um, 
show off the uh, the product just because we got Hamad saying uh, show it. <laughs> well, one, and then as we uh, kind of go ahead into that view, I do have one more question from David uh, or Dave Garrett. Um, can you explain the difference in features between an Orbi and let's say uh, Nighthawk EAX80? I know it's a little bit of a mix of consumer versus business, but you know, happy to get your take on that. And um, if, actually, okay. yeah, so and then. Go ahead, bring out the product, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, switch it to uh, switch it to your view. You got the wheel. Okay, so so this is the uh, the new you know Orbi Pro Walk I six. Okay, nice got a towering figure. You know, good performance, right? Um, and excuse the engineering sample there. It's not a blemish. It's a badge of honor. If you uh, ever want to get one of these, you have to be a POM. Sorry. So you know, being the uh, designer of the product, the product manager, you know, I get one of these. Um, it's, it's great. So, you know, you can, this is the a base unit or the router unit, and you can connect up to six of them and, and form kind of a mesh network, right? To cover, you know, really large area. And then, uh, on the back, um, you don't see it here again, engineering sample. Supposedly one of the connectors, uh, it's yellow. It's got a yellow, uh, kind of a, a design you know, ring around it, which signifies that it's two things that it signifies. One is that it's 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet. Two is that that is the WAN port. Now, if you dig deep into the user manual, dig deep into the control panel, you can actually turn that 2.5 into a LAN port, right? Uh, so that, but by default, that is the WAN port, which makes this product ready and perfect when you have multi-gig internet connection. And that those are coming really, really soon, right? You know that cable modem, we just launched one that has uh, what, 1.2 gigabit per second uh, throughput now. And so, so cable is now served having uh, one gig per second. And when you have fiber and when you have 5G, you will definitely need to have more than one gig kind of an internet, the WAN port uh, interface. So this product is perfect, you know, it's, it's perfectly ready for the next three, even five years of technology uh, evolution. Wow. Yeah, and one thing I think we should just mention about, you know, Wi-Fi 6 versus Wi-Fi 5 is that if a device has Wi-Fi 6, they're going to have a certain number of radio connections that they can connect to. So they do max out at a certain speed per device. But, you know, in total, it can connect to multiple devices and, you know, serve them all at once, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, you know, a, a particular technology term for that is called bidirectional MU MIMO, right? Multi-user, multiple input, multiple output, and the advancement compared to Wi-Fi 5 is that now it's bi-directional. So it maximizes both speeds. So for gamers, this is really important, right? You're not just watching a YouTube video and Netflix downstream, you're conducting. And don't forget that this is a business product. This is a business product. Mm -hmm. So when you conduct a Zoom call, what do you think? It is bi-directional, right? It is not watching Netflix video. You are conducting a live conversation, bi-directional. So therefore, that bi-directional MU MIMO is so important, right? That mm -hmm. part of the justification of this new technology, this evolution of technology. Mm -hmm. And and just to kind of speak to kind of differentiating it from the business product versus like let's say like um, our flagship Orbi line, right? Our just the regular Orbeez. Um, what do you get in Orbi Pro that you can't get with any other Orbeez? So first of all, I mean we love them both, right? We're mm -hmm. next year, um, but. At any one particular time, both products evolve over time, improve in, over time. But at any one moment, the Orbi Pro version family has a little bit more business features. So, for example, in this one, it is it, the, the distinguishing feature is the secure Wi-Fi zone. Uh, so, Angelo, if you could yeah. find that particular slide, um, shows the four uh, segregated zones. So, what we have is what we call uh, uh, network separation, okay? So you have to understand that SSID is not a security feature, not at all. SSID is merely an authentication method to allow different groups of people to get onto the Wi-Fi. Once they get onto the Wi-Fi, it's free for all. It's the same um, network, right? It's like your house having multiple doors. But once you get through that door, you know, one, you know, multiple keys, once you get, exactly, that's this one. Mm -hmm. Once you get through, you're on the same network. What we have done is that we map a VLAN automatically 
to each individual SSIE. Now you have truly separated network. And this is so important to business, right? And this includes work from home. This product really is a, a, a perfect timing for, I mean, for this awful, awful period, right? We, we, we are suffering through it, but hey, we have to uh, kind of survive it. We have to, uh, you know, thrive under duress, right? And, and we are, you know, we're going through a very challenging period of time. And, and so we all have to work from home. We all have to, you know, accommodate to the fact that uh, we have, you know, family, they are using Netflix, my, my ch- children, my child, actually, I have only one, I'll disclose that private information. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she's at home, and she's doing, you know, tele communi- uh, 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 education. So her network needs to be as stable as mine, right? As high performance as mine, but needs to be separate from mine, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of the business features are now seeping, permeating throughout in the home, right? Mm-hmm. So having that separation is so important for a business application of Wi-Fi. The other thing is called client isolation. So look at guest Wi-Fi, right? When you walk into Starbucks, when you walk into uh, Pete, when you lock onto the guest Wi-Fi, you don't see anybody because those are major corporations, right? Major franchises. They have chosen enterprise grade uh, Wi-Fi. But if you walk into a local kind of a mom and pop shop, you lock onto their uh, uh, guest Wi-Fi very often. You can see your ne- next door neighbor, right? Um, you can use Bing to see the other guy. I mean, I have one colleague of mine who is so naughty. He walked into a cafe and he locked onto the guest Wi-Fi and used you know, his cell phone to turn off the, the TVs on the <laughs> wall. What? So this is how dangerous it is. Uh, so, so naughty kid, I mean, actually, he's, he's not a kid anymore, but he, he was just having fun with guess why not. Yeah, so, right. this is so <laughs> this is so important that when somebody gets onto the guest Wi-Fi, you need to make sure that there is a kind of a single lane that goes to the Internet and nowhere else, right? Only northbound traffic. So, we make guest Wi-Fi automatically, automatically client isolated, okay? Mm-hmm. So, of course, you can, you can turn... That, that feature on for other SSIDs. That's up to you, but there's a default value. That is so critically important. I mean, think about Airbnb, right? You host, mm-hmm. let's say, two family, three family. You, you, know, you, you, you want them to have their own SSID completely separate from the other. And the other beautiful thing is that, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. Before Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6, how did people do it? I mean, people must have a way to deal with it, right? So what they did was that they used a switch that has VLAN. Okay, mm. and then have one access point connected to one separate VLAN. So think about it. There are a couple of disadvantages in that, right? One is that there's a physical location that surrounds that AP. So let's say that you are in a pretty large hotel. I mean, think about it. Then your AP is in the lobby. Another AP is in you know second floor. I mean. You cannot traverse the entire hotel with the same SSID because you're limited to the SSID that is assigned to that particular physical AP, right? As opposed to this, when you form a mesh, the SSID is propagated to all the satellites. So you can actually traverse travel from one AP location. Let me back up. You travel from one satellite location to another satellite location to another satellite location, and you receive the same signal strength while staying within the SSID, staying within the VLAN. This is the beauty of it, right? So think of it as a great product for Airbnb, for a small hotel, and definitely for the home. You mm-hmm. do want to, I mean, we talk about work from home all the time, and work from home really has a couple things. A re- couple requirements. One is that, I mean, fundamentally, we people or businesses need to maintain the same level of productivity, right? Same level of productivity. What does that mean? That really just means the quality of communication between people, just like us right here. We're talking to each other almost like we're in the office. The second one is the ease of accessing data, right? Go to the net, go to the internet, go go back to your office. And that that security, that confidentiality, right? So how do we do that? How do we meet that goal? So having that VLAN assigned to SSID is, I would not say it's foolproof. We never say that, right? Um, you know, network uh, architecture has seven layers and each layer 
except probably the physical layer. Even the physical layer has certain security measure, right? So for next year, we do layer two, three, four, right? These are the layers that we, we, we work on. And then upper layer, there's the North, North, Northern Utility and, you know, uh, Kersky and the other guys that does that, that do uh, layer six, six, seven, and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we make sure that, you know, every data uh, network is, you know, secure, separated from uh, the next uh, 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 networks. That is so important mm -hmm. for small business as well as professionals who work from home. Mm -hmm. So let me just kind of bring up that work from home kind of example. I think there's a lot of folks here in the chat who are probably interested in kind of comparing these different solutions out there probably to upgrade their home setup. So let's say, because uh, we did have that comment, um, actually a couple comments. We got a couple folks uh, comparing the Nighthawk router plus mesh extender versus let's say something like Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6. Um, so both the same environment, but what kind of consumer would be interested in that Nighthawk, let's say route, and then who would be the best fit for Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6? Okay, so at a very high level, I mean, Again, every product is, you know, in every product improves over time. But at a very high level, Nighthawk has very, very high performance, single unit, okay? Very, very low lag time. If you add the Duma service, it has great QoS for gamers. So Nighthawk, by default, is the best product for gaming, okay, bar none, mm -hmm. all right? Great performance. Now, what does the extender do? An extender basically has two arms. One arm goes to the router. The, ar the other arm goes to the endpoint devices, right? So it does this extension, right? Take one from the router and give it to the device. Now, that is what we call the fast path. I, I, I forgot. That's not my product. Mm, but, fast lane. You know, it, I, I think it's called, right. huh? Fast lane. I think so, right? Fast lane. Yep. That's right. Fast lane. So when you have that architecture, it's called a fast lane. The, the opposite of fast lane is that you mix and match, you know, put both arms to the router, put both arms to the device at the same time. So you share, you know, the bandwidth that is not the optimal uh, architecture that we recommend, but some people want like it. So that's what an extender does, right? One arm going to the router, the other arm going to the device. A mesh system, on the other hand, is designed from day one intrinsically to enable multiple extenders, if I could borrow that term, right? Mm -hmm. Multiple extenders to work with a base unit to get to the internet and talk to each other, right? From mm -hmm. day one. And therefore, that arm becomes multi-arm, right? It's like uh, one of those Buddha, some you know, so it, 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 in 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 Hindi culture, right? You have that thousand Shiva. arm thing. So, <laughs> so Shiva. So instead of <laughs> one arm going yeah. to um, the the router, you have that what I call earlier the intelligent mesh design. Okay, so mm. that's the fundamental difference. A mesh system from day one is designed to have multiple satellites to achieve maximum Wi-Fi coverage throughout mm. a pretty large area right pretty large home that that's the goal right if you if you want to do if you if your if your objective is just to cover one room for wi-fi then you know mesh system is an overkill but mm -hmm. if you have multiple rooms multiple people doing using wi-fi all at the same time and you expect to have that kind of load on your wi-fi then a wi-fi mesh system will, 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 will be the ideal choice mm -hmm. for you awesome cool cool um, and uh, I, I saw ahead, a, a question in chat, so I wanted to bring that up. Uh, Doug, so I know that the Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 is able to use uh, Insight for remote access. Uh, is it able mm -hmm. to use the uh, instant captive portal feature at this time of uh, Insight? Um, no, not yet. No, not yet. Um, that's on the roadmap, but mm -hmm. not at this particular moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and so just, if you need those kinds of features now, we do have options for those uh, that are Wi-Fi 6. That would be the WAX 610, mm -hmm. uh, the right. WAX 610Y. Uh, so do, mm -hmm. if you do need the instant captive portal features to capture um, email addresses for users, yep. then you, you mm -hmm. can use some of those other products, including the, uh, the Wi-Fi 5 uh, mm -hmm. Insight mm -hmm. access points. Okay, 
Awesome. And I think right. that's for uh, Richard Ho's question. I think uh, that's he just correct. popped that one. Okay, awesome. Um, so I just want to make sure I also didn't miss any other questions here as well. So right where I uh, have you, Doug. Um, we got one from Brendan who asked a little bit earlier in the show. Uh, how many concurrent devices can the Orbi Pro support on each of its radios? Can it support more than, let's say, the Nighthawk R8000? Okay. So there's a theoretical number and there's a realistic number, right? The theoretical number is 256. I mean, that is codified in the software, right? It, it is a, uh, a function of, you know, the, the, the address table that we put into the memory, whatever, right? That's the mm -hmm. software parameter. But then in real terms, how many devices you can connect at exactly the same time is a function of the application that you're doing, right? If you're doing high performance gaming, then, hey, you know, probably just eight devices, right? Because you really need that kind of dedicated, uh, very fast uh, throughput. But mm -hmm. if you're doing streaming, if you're doing even Zoom, it can concurrently uh, 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 handle 20, no problem, mm -hmm. right? So it is a little bit of a function of the application, the ability of the endpoint device, right? The quality of the endpoint device is important too. Is it a one by one radio or is it a two by two radio? Is it AX or if it, it, it's AC, right? Mm -hmm. Does it have all the MU mind mode that I talked about enabled? So it it, it it gets a little complicated, right? So, but Apple to Apple comparison, certainly uh, Wi-Fi 6 handles four times more mm -hmm. than Wi-Fi 5. Okay, Apple to Apple comparison, if you're running exactly the same device, the same number of, you know, same kind of applications, pound for pound, it's four times more devices. So Wi-Fi 6 is really great for um, businesses. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I mean, it meets the challenge of that, you, you know, what we call, uh, you know, ever increasing number of devices in the household, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, that is a given. But if you think that, you know, individuals have this in increasing number of devices. I mean, just think about a small business, right? People come in, people go. Um, I mean, the number of devices that they need to handle is just tremendous. It's exponential. Um, you know, so so yeah, it's uh, it's a critical uh, design requirement um, uh, in you know the current and next generations of uh, 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 Wi-Fi devices. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I know. I, I know. We had a couple of the use cases that we did want to talk about. I just did. I while we have the screen up, um, I just think it's super great. I mean, what you just mentioned here. Let's say you're an Airbnb host and you live in a duplex and you rent out your 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 back your back house. Yeah, you have a converted back garage or something like that. Um, yeah, you know, you don't want your guests using your uh, main Wi-Fi that you use for business or even for 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 like for play. Um, you want them to have that dedicated network. You know thinking about the implications from work from home versus learning from home. You know, I think that's something that we're talking a lot as a company, you know, this is something that's happening right now. And how can these products fit into that story? I think that's uh, something really cool that we could uh, talk about a little bit later on in the show. Um, I know actually this hour did go past very quickly. Uh, we have about 12 minutes left. So everyone here who is in the chat right now, highly encourage you to get your questions in. Um, I'm still almost at kind of like halfway through the chat here. So I want to kind of just like rapid fire this out. And then Doug, if there's anywhere that you want to me to kind of flip through in terms of the slides, talking about the use cases, you know, just let me know and um, I'll flip through it. But otherwise, uh, Dave Garrett, if you didn't answer your question already here in the chat, uh, does the backhaul assume that you have an Orbi Pro base station, which I'm thinking is the Orbi Pro router in the setup? In uh, IE, you need the router as well as the access points, or let's say the satellite. That's true. That is true because we do we do assume that the backhaul is a 11 ax it is a wi-fi 6 right that gives you the fastest speed so yeah mm -hmm. um so orbi pro wi-fi 6 satellites are not compatible with the original orbi pro mm -hmm. okay yeah something for everyone to know here in the chat um really really something great. something i wanted to mention since um i think there was maybe some confusion about it is i think someone was asking if you can use the the um the satellites without the router and you actually have to have the router however you don't necessarily need the router as your router it can be in access point mode is that correct doug correct just in case correct. you have a yeah. um a router from your or a modem router from your uh, isp you can still yep. plug in the orbi pro to mm -hmm. that yep and use access point mode and mm -hmm. probably right. turn off the wi-fi on your on your um modem router right. that you have from your isp so you know you can still yeah. take the advantages of having the orbi pro 
and you know all the backhaul and all that great wireless even if you can't yep. change modem routers you're absolutely right that's why every now and then i slip in a uh, kind of an internal term i call it base unit it, you know externally all we have been you know kind of keeping consistent that we call it the router unit mm -hmm. but internally because we're all engineers you know we know that it, it, it actually a router slash access point dual mode so mm -hmm. uh, we call it a base unit a lot mm -hmm. um Angelo, could you flip to uh, slide number 16? Yes. Let me flip through that. All right. So it's two generations of Orbit Pro. Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep talking. And um, mm -hmm. you know, every now and then, I'll just refer to that page. Okay. Um, that, that page gives you a really good comparison between you know, Orbit Pro Original and Orbit Pro Wi-Fi 6. Just look at the difference in the back hall as well as the front hall. Especially in the front hall, you see a huge difference in terms of throughput, in terms of its capability. Oh wow, <laughs> that's that's awesome. Thank you, thank you for flipping up that slide. Um, I'm gonna keep flipping you questions here before we run out of time here. Uh, I know Dave Garrett, you you did um, throw a few in there that we would love to get answered. Um, he's asking, so would business features on the base station include the VPN client or server for LAN to LAN? Yes, it does. It has, it has VPN uh, uh, termination and pass-through capability in the base unit or in the router unit. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, just so I could get this one as well, um, Brett, I think you did uh, answer Stefan's uh, question here in the chat, but just uh, want to get Doug's perspective. Um, a total newbie question. Can you use this product to link home desktops to combine computing power for scientific, <laughs> scientific research purposes? If so, how would you recommend doing that? That's a little tough, okay? <laughs> I, you know, you, you, you threw me some technical term. Now I'm, I'm going to throw yep. something back at you. There's something called embedded system, okay? And OB Pro units are embedded systems. Um, what that means is that it's an enclosed system. It's not like a, you know, a, a, a server. It's not like a open system where you can add modules in. Mm -hmm. Now, so, so therefore, to answer your question uh, 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 quickly, no, we cannot do a kind of a multi-threaded, multitasking, symmetric, distributed computing, put certain things on your PCs, put certain things in the router. No, we cannot do that. Not now. In the future, can we? Uh, maybe. We don't know. I mean, will there be a point that we have a mesh system that is also a compute, multi-node compute system? I don't know. That's a great idea. Maybe at some point I'll remember your name and attribute that that product to your wonderful thoughts. <laughs> but all in, in all fairness, if you have a networked application that's scientific, that's meant to talk to other computers on your network, the so Orbi's going to pass traffic no problem, just like any right. other computers mm -hmm. connected to each other. Right. And including right. on the satellites, they have Ethernet ports. If you plug a device into that Ethernet port, it's going to talk to the satellite and the router as if they're connected by a cable. It's like a virtual right. cable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Um, awesome. Yeah, so Stefan, if this is something you really want, come back and we'll probably be doing more shows with Doug. So if you remember you, I remember everyone who kind of comes back here and returns, <laughs> you know, we'll remember what you're asking for. Uh, appreciate that suggestion. Um, another request from Dave Garrett, uh, what I would really, 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 really like <laughs> is a USB-C Wi-Fi dongle. So I can upgrade the Wi-Fi okay. on my MacBook Pro. <laughs> so you know that historically that's tough, right? Historically, <laughs> that's been really, really tough. Um, having a Windows drivers driver from the silicon suppliers, you know, it's there. So you, you, you see that we have AC, um, A6100, A6200, A7000. I think those are our part numbers for the adapter. And I'm sure at some point we're going to have an adapter for AX. But for Mac, I got to tell you, it, it, it's been tough. It's been tough. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we're, you know, we, we're at the mercy of the driver, the silicon developers, right? If they don't give us the driver, you just can't do it. So, yeah, I know. I know that um, there are people who really, really, really want it, uh, but we're not quite there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Thank you for the, uh, the detailed answers. Everyone's saying how... Uh... They love all your answers. I'm telling you, Doug, you're, uh, <laughs> you're great Good. to have you on the show. <laughs> they miss you. Uh, all right, Ben Bailey, uh, follow up on the number of devices. What about home automation, like smart switches, etc.? Is that the 256 number? I think we mentioned 256 earlier. Okay, so the home automation 
devices, depending if they're wireless or they're wired. If they're wired, there's no limitation, right? Just plug it into, well, let, let me take it back. So behind this, when you have multiple Ethernet ports, what that means is that there's a switch behind it, right? So for every switch, there is that something called MAC address lookup table, right? Even though that MAC address lookup table is continuously kind of putting new switches in, you know, dumping old, old devices out, right? So there's a limit. If I say there's absolutely no limit, that's false. But mm -hmm. in a home environment, even in a business environment, you will have a lot less devices than that MAC address table's size. So there's never a real limit when it comes to a wire device. When it comes to Wi-Fi, you are at the mercy of physics, right? This, you know, this thin air, this ether that gives you that, you know, uh, uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. So the same uh, kind of physical constraints would apply, right? Uh, how far are you, um, are, you know, is, how, how noisy is the environment? How many devices are simultaneously uh, trying to gain? Because you know that, you know, radio is a precious, limited resource, right? There are only this number of channels available to you. So if you have a lot of devices jamming that same, you know, number of uh, channels, you're going to get a pretty noisy environment and your throughput will be great somewhat. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a function of many factors. So if your home auto or business automated uh, device, if it's Wi-Fi, that, excuse me, then it's subject to the same laws of physics. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to how many num number of devices it, it, it's connected to. I hope that answers your question. I know it's a long-winded answer to a simple question. Oh, no worries. Um, one second. Let me go ahead and kind of kind of chop you guys back up here. Uh, I think we might have lost the, uh, the Zoom chat. Um, but while I fix that, I want to thank everybody here for coming. We're not, we're not done yet. I'm going to throw you a couple more questions here as I kind of rearrange a little bit of... Um, a zoom window. By the way, I can't make it perfect. By the way, uh, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Brett, <laughs> for, for joining me You're here. Um, I'm going to actually throw a little uh, last minute ones here uh, while we still got you guys. Um, I actually did catch up to it um, relatively, so we got about a minute per question here. Uh, Rich and just received Orbi Pro this week. Where in the settings do I turn on link aggregation? A little bit more of a tech support question. A little bit more of a tech support question. Link aggregation. Oh, so if you go to local admin UI, link aggregation is enabled. Okay. If you use Insight, give it a couple months. Okay. This is a uh, you know official, well, semi-official thing uh, from Netgear. So I would not put a date there because that has you know financial legal liabilities for me to say anything like that. But wait a couple of months, that feature will be enabled in uh, Insight. But if you want it now, it's enabled in the uh, the local UI. Um, Dan K, how does this product work with DSL connections? So use the Ethernet port. Use the WAN port to connect to your DSL modem. Very easy, very simple. Keep your DSL modem as the modem and use Orbi Pro as the router. Okay, awesome, awesome. And one more, one more, and then uh, we're pretty much closed out. So thank you, everybody. Uh, 8 Mile 4S, will there be specific performance modems Oh, this is more of the Nighthawk question, but I'm going to throw it at you anyway. Uh, will there be specific modems for the Nighthawk line, or are there specific certain routers that work best? So let's say, hey, so, what's the best modem out there for this kind of product? Yeah, so uh, the, the router is generic, right? So what you need to look at is the WAN port speed, right? Um, on the Nighthawk side, I believe they also have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet WAN port uh, uh, skew. So on the, on the Orbi Pro side, we have the Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6 that has 2.5. So you just look at the WAN port and look at the speed on it, right? R currently, the most popular, the most common port speed is 1 gigabit, but there, we, we're starting to see, and Netgear is leading that, that charge of enable, enabling multi-gig uh, internet connection on the, uh, on the router side. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Um, and then one more, one more from Dan K. Uh, I've had a lot of routers over the years. I always just take them out. Uh, can leaving those old Wi-Fi connections mess up your network? I think he means inside like his phone or something for mm. trying to look for those. I don't think it affects anything if it doesn't see the SSID. No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, and just to clarify You don't that, want to have a bunch of old routers sitting on your network because they're going to, you know, send out Wi-Fi signals. Yeah, so yep. I yeah. So one that. thing... Th 
One thing that you really need to look out for is don't put a router behind a router because a router, what it does is it does network address translation. So every time you go through a router, it assigns IP addresses to your individual devices. So if you put one router behind another router that masquerades or translates that address, you know, yet one more time. So a lot of the uh, applications rely on knowing the IP address or IP addresses of the endpoint device. So once you have a couple layers of that router, your app sometimes will break. And it, it, we can go on forever to talk about, you know, how to fix that and are there mm -hmm. reliable ways of fixing that. For the real network geeks, yes, you know, there's always ways to do it, but it is not recommended. So be very careful when you have multiple routers on the same network. The safest thing to do is turn off all your routers and make them access points so that you have only one router in the network that does that IP address assignment or translation. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. All right, so we are a little bit over time here. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, I want to be able to bond properly. Thank you, guys. Um, but I want to float up the product page here real quick for uh, everyone who is interested. Oh, and we are broken again. And let me go ahead and uh, fix that just really quick here. Um, sorry, you guys are seeing everything here in, uh, in real time. Looks fine to me. It's looking all right. It's going to look pretty bad by the moment uh, you see it <laughs> okay. on YouTube. But give me a quick second here. Sorry. Uh, everything here, again, real time. By the way, uh, I put a link in the description down below. Uh, if anyone here is interested in looking at Orbi Pro Wi-Fi 6, uh, it is. Doug, is that available today? What's available to looking like? It is. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. And uh, one more. Uh, is is it available in India, actually? We did get a comment coming in from Abbasid. Um, Not yet. I promise it will be available in India in due time. Again, you know, I'm a little bit, you know, constrained in projecting the exact time. Uh, but it will be there. It will awesome. be there. Great, great, great. All right, everybody. That Thank is you. the Thank show. You. Thank you so much, Brent. Thank you. Doug. We always love the energy and we always love the detailed answers uh, you give us here. And to everyone here who's watching the chat, and to everyone here who's watching the chat, I would I, actually, I should have said this a little bit earlier, but please, 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 we appreciate that like. Uh, if you give us a like, we all will be able to get this event out to more and more eyes. I, I checked the stats, it's literally like 2% of people get notifications about these events. And if you guys want to see these events keep going, uh, we would love to see more people coming in and hopefully enjoying this and finding it valuable. So please, I highly encourage you, if you, uh, if you haven't liked it already, hit that like, super easy, it takes two seconds, maybe one second, and maybe two seconds if you subscribe, because we would love that as well. We just hit that 50K mark. So again, this is to everyone who has uh, reached all the way to the end of the show. If you come uh, to our Friday show, it's a two hour tech support live show. We will be giving away some free shirts um, just to uh, just to celebrate a little bit for hitting that milestone. But otherwise, Brett, Doug, thank you again for coming. We thank always you. appreciate your time here and chat. We'll see you next Tuesday and thank Friday. You so much. Thank you all. All right. All right. See Later. You. Yep. Bye bye.